the Baraboo, Baraboo, Wisconsin. It's a Baraboo, and it's a busy place. It's the Union Soldier. It's a pretty good little square here. I like this courthouse elevated, surrounded by buildings. I don't think I've done any Wisconsin courthouses. Maybe I need to do one. There's one right here. I'm not sure what county this is, though. I know it's the city of Baraboo. The A.L. Ringling Theater has to be associated with the circus, right? What a cool building. Wow, look at this. A.L. Ringling. Of the Ringling Brothers Circus. Wow, this is good. And the costumes. Uh, A.L. Wrigley who donated the theater oh to the town. The marble and look at the uh, plaster work and the marvelous ceiling. Wow, look, it's 4th of July. And Bailey. This was their winter quarters. What was this for a wig, huh? Just returned from Australia, the Sells Brothers. Sells Photo Circus. Look at these costumes. Look like the magician or something. Receiver. Combined shows. Uh, look at this photo. Circus is a world filled with dramatic expressions of visual art. Sometimes this art is expressed in the form of live performances. Other times it was found in the lithographer's steady hand or the skills of a woodcarver decorating a tableau wagon. It can be found in the exaggerated style of the sideshow banners. And here's, here's the elephant. I hope it's not the mad one like the one in Wabash. Mr. A.O.L. Ringley. Now it's hit, time to head to the Circus World Museum. Not sure what this is. Yeah. I'm at the right place. Here they are, the Ringling Brothers. Alf Ringling, A.L. He's the guy that built the theater. Wow. Five of them. And here's the story. With, five, with a small tent, three horses, a hyena, a hyena, and a troop of 21, the five Ringling brothers, Al, Otto, Alf, T, Charles, and John, began their circus in Baraboo on May 19, 1884. Less than a quarter of a century later, they absorbed the giant, they absorbed the giant Barnum and Bailey Circus, and after World War I, the two shows merged into the most colossal circus ever presented, truly the greatest show on earth.
from a humble small town, small Midwestern town background, the Ringing Brothers made good on their boyhood dream of starting their own circus. In an era of fierce competition among traveling shows, they revolutionized the business, producing a clean, fast-paced show in a wholesale, wholesome setting. The five Ringlings worked as a simple team, dividing the labor according to the talent and inclination, but always acting as one. Their partnership was never on paper, and they shared equally in what became, during their lifetime of hard work, considerable wealth. For decades, the Ringling's special 100-car train and Big Top that held 10,000 people were synonymous with the thrills of the American circus. And Barnum and Bailey still thrives, paying tribute to the vision of the young Ringling's who began in the Baraboo more than a century ago. The Ringling Brothers did not come up the hard way, they came up the impossible way. Wow, these are great posters. The lady at the ticket office was in North Carolina. She married a clown. His brothers in their fifties. They'd been in the service business together for almost 30 years. In the years prior to World War I, they toured the two greatest railroad services of all time. Each traveled on 84 cars, which pulled into town early in the day. An elaborate street parade lasting 20 to 30 minutes was next. These services carried a large menagerie and sideshow and spectacular big top show, complete with at least one historic spectacle. Each service transported more than 1,300 people to stages lavish entertainment. In 1916, the Ringling dynamic shifted again when the oldest brother, the one who so doggedly pursued his circus dreams, died at age 63. The year before his death, the Wisconsin legislature honored Al Ringling with a resolution. He easily has become the foremost circusman of the world and contributed more than any other to elevate our remake exhibitions to the high and honorable plane which they now occupy. Therefore, be it resolved that the Assembly, with the Senate concurring, on behalf of all the people of the Commonwealth, hereby record its admiration for Mr. Ringling as a man, and for the genius displayed in the organization and operation of his great circus. For the next three seasons, the remaining four brothers kept both circuses going. Despite a shortage of performers, service workers, and railway facilities. The reason? The world was at war. With so many men and resources focused on World War I, it was a constant battle to make it to their engagements. But the ringings were dedicated to bringing entertainment to the war weary masses on the home front. When the ringling circus entered the 1918 season in Georgia, the nation was still at war. It was more practical to have this circus join the Barnum Show at its East Coast wintering ground rather than ship it all the way back to Barrow. As it turned out, the Wisconsin town where the Ringling started out was never to be the home of their circus again. Henry, the youngest brother, who had become a partner only seven years before, died on October 11, 1918. The three remaining partners Charles, John, and Alf T. merged the two circuses that winter. The Ringling Brothers Bonnet and Bailey was the largest circus ever known and remains the world's largest circus enterprise to this day. Traveling on 90 to 100 or more cars, the show began to concentrate more on the big top performance. The street parades were eventually eliminated. Alf T. Ringling died at the end of the combined show's inaugural season. This left two brothers. John was involved with routing and scouting new animals. Charles, like Al before him, spent more time on the lot, overseeing the day-to-day -day activities.
Charles died late in 1926. John forged ahead as the last of the original Ringling brothers. Owning the greatest circus of all time gave John the confidence to buy out the American Circus Corporation, which owned five large competitors. Unfortunately for him, the year was 1929. The economic depression that began that year hit him hard. He lost control of his circus empire in 1932, when creditors demanded a change in management. John Ringling died in 1936 at the age of 70, 52 years after that spring when he and his brothers had set out with Yankee Robinson. But the Ringling family hadn't given up on running the world's greatest circus. Their sister Ida's sons, Henry and John Ringling North, reclaimed control in 1938. Putting John in charge was a splendid gamble on the part of our relatives in the Manufacturers Trust Company. It was a tremendous challenge to him. Johnny never doubted for a moment he could do it. Born and raised in Baraboo, surrounded by their uncle's circus, the North Brothers initially boosted interest in the shows by reinstating wild animal acts, including Bring Him Back Alive, Frank Buck, and Gargantua, actually a pet gorilla from Brooklyn. John hired a high-class Broadway designer to revamp the show's historical spectacle. He went on to hire top designers for circus costumes, sets, posters, and programs. He also incorporated celebrated dance and musical artists into the show. The North Brothers' greatest influence, however, was their decision to modernize the big circus. Traditionally, hundreds of horses were used for transport. They replaced these with trucks and tractors. The great American innovation, the circus tent, was eventually abandoned in 1956. In its place, the North Brothers created the indoor arena circus that most Americans are familiar with today. The great traditions of the Wrigley Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, the greatest show on earth, are now carried on by Kenneth Feld and Feld Entertainment, the world's largest traveling entertainment enterprise. The move indoors by the Ringling Brothers' Barn and Bailey show meant that an incredible amount of equipment was instantly rendered obsolete. Many items went to the Circus World Museum in Barrow, Wisconsin, founded in 1959 by John Kelly, the Ringling Brothers' attorney from 1909 to 1937, it created a repository for circus history. The museum also preserved some of the original Ringling Winter Quarters, still standing along the Baraboo River. There were 30 buildings in the area once known as Ringlingville. Seven remain, documenting the key role Wisconsin played in the development of the American circus. When I think about circus history, I think about the, the Ringlings when they first started and, and, and the amazing job that they had to do and how well they got along. I think there will always be circus as long as we have people like the ones you see in the background who want to bring their children to the circus and relive that nostalgia and that, uh, that feeling that they had when they were children. I think it's our obligation to present them a format that helps them relive that nostalgia and that memory. I think as long as that, that's alive and well, there'll be circuses in America. I remember when I was a young man, my, my mother and father took me, and I believe that's what people should do. What your mother and father did for you, you should do for your kids. Tradition and uh, heritage, and it's the country, it's the United States, this is what it's all about, doing things with your kids. 
it never will be changed to any great extent because men and women will always long to be young again. There's as much chance of Mother Goose or Addison's fairy tales going out of style as of a circus soldiering greatly. If we desired to change it, the people would not permit it. Clowns, elephants, pretty ladies in gowns, riding white horses. That is the circus.